Creating Eye Forms for Silicone Bus. In this video, we'll be covering the technique of creating some eye forms to put into a hydrocal mold to create uh, eye forms or allowances for glass eyes in silicone bus. And now you might have seen this already on our Instagram page. We've been uh, posting a lot of stuff about this, about the uh, reptilian head that I've been working on here is just a fun little personal project. So uh, if you haven't already, you can follow us on Instagram at at Biddy Mold Supply. And basically this uh, video is going to walk you through the process of making uh, eye forms to use in the place of glass eyes in a hydrocal or resin mold. Uh, we're just going to be covering the eye form part of this process. So for the rest of the process of making a silicone likeness, uh, be sure to check the video description. I'll post a link to a whole page of videos relative to that uh, in the video description. Now for starters, we'll be molding an alligator eye form. This is a glass eye from a taxidermy supply, and uh, we want to mold that to reproduce it in uh, hard plastic. So since this eye form is actually hollow, uh, we want to uh, fill it in with some clay behind that hollow spot in the eye. So here I'm just packing it in with some uh, protolina clay. This is some protolina soft. It's just a sulfur-free modeling clay, uh, very cheap and good for uh, utility work like this and I'm actually using that clay just to stick it down to some foam core. The eye itself weighs enough that uh, we don't have to worry about it floating when we actually go to make our mold. So since this is just a kind of a quick and dirty mold we're just going to press it down to the board with that clay uh, but it's real important that we make sure there's no air trapped inside that glass eye because when I go to pour my silicone over this eye form later on I don't want that uh, air to come out and create a giant air bubble or a void in that mold. Now, real important step here, since we're molding glass, we want to make sure that we release it properly. And here we're using some of the Eject It 33 mold release. That's a very important step because silicone really wants to stick to glass. Now for the mold material, we'll be using some of the new FS20 silicone. Now FS20 stands for fast setting and it's a 20 shore A. And this is a really fast silicone. It's a great silicone to have handy in your lab or workshop uh, when you're making small parts or reproducing small parts and you need to do it quick. This is a very low viscosity silicone that just mixes a one to one by weight or volume and it has an eight minute working time and then a 25 minute demold. So plenty of time to vacuum degas it if you want, but it's also low viscosity enough that in most cases like this, vacuum degassing is not really necessary. Now to go back to the uh, release one more time, the release we use is really important on this kind of mold. Anytime you're making a silicone mold, but especially when you're uh, going to be pouring silicone over glass or any kind of metal surface, make sure that you're using a compatible mold release. The Eject It 33 does not contain any silicone oil. Also, the 2500, the Polys 2500, is also a good release for this. Both of those release agents don't contain any silicone oil and are really good spray releases for releasing glass and metal objects. If for some reason you were to use a silicone-based mold release, it would actually act as a bonding agent and or an adhesion promoter between the glass and the silicone. So real important step there, don't ever take for granted that a release agent is going to work for everything. And now ready to pour our silicone over our pattern. And for this particular eye form, we follow the rules of any kind of silicone mold. I like to pour my silicone in a theme, thin stream to uh, one side of the part and just let the silicone seek its level. Now, this was a fairly warm day, so the FS20 went a little faster than normal. Uh, this kicked off to where we could demold it in right at about 20 minutes. Now, a quick aside about this project that I, I did with the, the alligator eye. This whole thing was born out of a uh, discussion about the miniseries V and this uh, little alligator eye in my uh, sculpting kit and uh, during one of our sculpting classes. And all of that wound up becoming the sculpture you're about to see. So uh, now, the, now that we've got our mold finished, we're ready to pour our resin. Now, one other little thing I wanted to show you, uh, it's springtime here in Texas when we film this video. So uh, here I'm mixing up some of the TC800 resin. This is just a fast setting, very hard resin. 
Um, and resins this time of year are very moisture sensitive. So instead of the usual popsicle stick for stirring, we're going to be using a steel spatula. And that's a really important consideration, especially here in the south uh, where it's really humid. If you live anywhere where there, there's a lot of uh, ambient humidity, it's a good idea to make sure you stir your polyurethane resins and other polyurethane materials with a steel uh spatula rather than a wooden stir stick. Uh, sometimes wooden stir sticks here in the south, especially if you're not working in a climate controlled area, can attract ambient humidity and then transfer that into your casting material. Now one of the reasons we're using the TC800 for this particular application is this is a very hard, very machinable resin and it also sets up really fast. So uh, this is ideal for this kind of application and also if for any reason we needed to machine this resin and embed some hardware to screw it into the negative mold, we could. Now this particular resin has a about a two minute working time and about a 10 to 15 D mold. And a quick word about small batches like this. You'll notice in a lot of videos where we work in really small amounts, what I like to do is over mix the amount of resin I need, pour the excess in another mold that I might need a part out of, and then use that smaller amount in the small mold. And that way I don't, uh, don't have to worry about that mix ratio being off because it's real easy to be off ratio on working in really small amounts. And since that I-form didn't even take a full ounce of resin, it'd be real easy to be off ratio on that size batch. And now for the fun part. We've inserted our I-form into our life cast sculpture and now I'm sculpting a reptilian skin around that I-form. And basically what this uh, resin I-form does is create a placeholder later for our uh, glass or acrylic eye that we'll be putting into the, the finished silicone head. So I've got that I-form in place and sometimes it helps to draw a little dot on it so you can remember uh, where the, the pupil orientation is going to be. But in our finished hydrocal mold, you see that those I-forms just sit perfectly in place. Now this is a, a fairly simplified version of this kind of process. Uh, instead of making these actually screw into the finished mold, since this is a, a hydrocal mold, I'm just going to wipe away that silicone right there on the I-forms and then put those in place. And we'll show some more about this in a, another video that gets more into this particular part of the process. But once those are in place on my follow-up layers of silicone that I'm brushing into that negative mold, I will seal those I-forms in place. And basically what this does, now that since we've got that al allowance in place for those eyes, once I put that the rest of the silicone in that encapsulates those forms, uh, when I demold that part, now here we've cast up a, a gel tin skin backed up by some F5 polyfoam. Once we've done that, once we demold it, we now have those eye forms in place in the silicone head. And when we remove those uh, resin eye forms that we put in, now we have a perfect allowance to hold the uh, alligator eye and the regular human eye that were in the original sculpture. And the orientation of the eyes is correct because since everything was molded in place and we created that little eye socket in the uh, negative mold, now when everything is pulled out, we have that little allowance in place where those eyes will just snap right into place. So here we're going to do a quick paint job. And again, I'd just like to point out that this video is more of an overview of this process, mainly focusing on the eye form. So if you found this video for the first time and are curious about this process, uh, check the video description for links to a, an entire page of these videos on our website where we cover a lot of uh, silicone prop making, silicone uh, busts, and other silicone painting techniques. So be sure to check that out and I'll also be putting uh, a product links in the video description so check that out as well. And of course uh, those of you who uh, uh, like following this sort of thing, be sure to check us out on Instagram. And of course, we are at Biddy Mold Supply on Instagram. So there you have the basic process. Once we are done with our paint job, we can pop the eyes back into place and we're ready to proceed with any other finishing work that needs to be done to our silicone bust. In this case, uh, we needed to start hand laying some hair and punching some hair in place. And that is a very long, laborious process, which again is found on that video page, which I will link in the video description. So if you want to see more on hair punching and finishing, be sure to check that out. 
So here is our almost finished bust, still uh, probably several hours more of hair punching uh, to finish the hairline. And uh, we might come back to our uh, reptilian bust in a future video and show some more techniques. But there you have it, the use of uh, resin eye forms to create an allowance in a mold for glass eyes. And of course, as always, be sure to check out the links in the video description. And remember that all the molding and casting supplies uh, shown in our videos are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com. And thanks again for watching. And if you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe.